When I come off stage, a lot of people ask me the same question. How the hell do you do that? I would rather die, they say. They do say die, than go up on a stage and make a presentation. Do you talk? No, oh, Mr. Bond, I die. And I get it. I used to be really bad at it as well. I had to overcome my fear and I've had to be aware of a process to get better. I am not a natural presenter. So here are some of the things that have helped me overcome that fear and that barrier and maybe will also help you. First up is that the bar is pretty low. Most presentations are very, very standard, possibly dull. So you don't have to be amazing. You're not competing with Ginny and Georgia, my new favourite. I can't tell if I'm the crazy one or if everyone else is. I know I'm two years out of date. I don't want to hear it. I just love it. The second thing is you need to be really comfortable with your subject. A lot of presentations go wrong when somebody from finance gets asked to do a little bit of an update on HR. Suddenly the anxiety and awkwardness is bubbling out of them. They don't fully know what they're talking about. But at the other end of the risk is trying to convey too much complex data through a presentation. People can absorb one, two, maybe three points. So you need to decide what those are in advance. Don't give them too much complexity. That's what handouts are for. That's what QR codes are for. There's other ways of getting out the detail that you need. Don't try and do it from the stage. Next up, don't be afraid to be interesting. I spoke to a CFO recently who said, you know what, I can't use all the stories and anecdotes and analogies and metaphors because, you know, I'm just presenting finance numbers. I would say absolutely the opposite. Use an analogy. Use something that makes people laugh or picture something because that is what they're going to remember. And sometimes people worry that I'll be wasting time from the main content of the presentation. Actually, it's probably going to be the thing that lands the best. On a similar theme, don't be afraid of using time for audience interaction. As long as you're reasonably confident that a decent number of people are going to go, yeah, that changes the chemistry in the room, makes a big difference, well worth investing the time. On the point of time, of course, nobody ever criticised presentations for being too short, so always be comfortable keeping it tight. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, you have to turn up as who you are. I spoke to somebody recently who had a very big presentation. She bought herself a very smart corporate shift dress and a pair of heels and she felt awfully uncomfortable, felt like she couldn't move. The next day she had to do the same presentation again. She turned up in her trainers, casual trousers, rocked the room, felt so much better. Even if you say to me, Christine, but I'm an introvert, I'll say that's fine, that's okay, because introverts do the most planning and as long as they turn up as who they are, they do really good presentations. Listen, those are some things that help me. I'm sure there's lots of things that have helped you. I'd love to hear them, do share them. I've got a tip for you this week, which is the Knowledge Project podcast. It's brilliant, it's got loads of amazing content, the end of year roundups. Whew blow your mind, got an hour and a half train journey or car ride. Next week, I'm emceeing a conference for LinkedIn. It's with HR leaders, recruitment people. It's all the stuff that's going on at work right now and what we're expecting next. I'm going to be sharing all the best insights and the highlights with you, and I will see you then. Have a great week.